Hi again. I'm showing off another clock that I just finished, which uses uh, Numatron displays. Um, these are not Nixie tubes, they're not LEDs, they're not vacuum fluorescents. They're actually uh, incandescent filaments, basically little mini light bulbs arranged in a, in a segment pattern. And uh, I got them on eBay. They're uh, uh, Soviet surplus uh, Numatron tubes. Uh, the model number is um, IV-19, and I think in Russian, if I'm remembering correctly, that would be IV-12. Um, and one thing that stands out is that in addition to the you know, uh, seven segment pattern that you expect, there are these diagonal segments. So this is, ac these are actually nine segment displays. Um, the nine segment pattern, uh, if I can kind of get this into frame, um, uh, it was used in a lot of old um, Russian electronics, calculators, um, things like that because uh, there are already two uh, Cyrillic letters that look like the number three. You have Z and E. So by adding these diagonal segments, you can differentiate the numeral three um, and, you know, I guess just make some of the other ones look kind of cool. Um, this uh, segment layout is used for uh, machine-readable postcodes on uh, Russian mail. And... Um, I just think it's really cool and uncommon, and I don't know if I've ever seen one of these on uh, the internet with this nine-segment pattern. So uh, I will uh, turn it around, just like the Panaplex clock in my last video. It's made out of uh, laser-cut walnut, and that thing's going to slip, and there we go. Laser-cut walnut and laser-cut acrylic for the faceplate turn it around on the back. It gets power through uh, a USB mini B connector and it's got three push buttons on the back and there's a piezo beeper in here so unlike the Panaplex clock this is an alarm clock and we have four little feet on the bottom. Now one of the really really cool things about these um, Numatron displays is that unlike a neon tube like a Nixie or a Panaplex, um, which emits a very specific wavelength of orange light, um, the light emitted by these filaments is very broad spectrum, so you can pretty much use whatever color filter you want. You know, purple, blue, here I'm using green, I have an, a few more colors I can show you. Um, and if I take the faceplate off, you can see the tubes inside. Um, under, you know, without any filter, they basically just look like, um, you know, regular old incandescent filaments, orange, uh, you know, the kind that they have in hipster restaurants. <laughs> um, now here's what it looks with a blue faceplate. Um, now with Nixie tubes, you wouldn't be able to see anything at all. Uh, this would basically be completely opaque. Um, but with the blue filter on, um, they're just this very deep turquoise color that I can't really capture uh, that well on um, my phone. But it's just really, really cool. And... We've got green and blue, so let's also try red as well. And the red is also very, very, um, very bright, very saturated. Um, just any, whatever color, these are the only colors of acrylic I had, but um, it's just so cool. <laughs> Um, let me put the uh, green one back on, and then I'll kind of uh, walk you through the features of the clock. All right, we've got the green filter on, and you know what? Let's turn off the lights. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as you saw, there are three buttons. 
um, on the back. The first one, the topmost one, when you press it, it dims the display. You get seven levels of brightness. When you hold it, it shuts off the display, putting the clock to sleep, so it saves power. Uh, the middle button, when you hold it, uh, it lets you set the time, which we should do because that is most definitely not the time, and it's most definitely not January 1st, 2000. So you hold the middle button, and now uh, the hours are flashing. Right now it's 9 o'clock, so we'll set this to 21, 21.52. Try to focus a little bit better. All right, and then... Uh, Pressing the third button will show the date. The date is also shown every two minutes. And if you hold down the button, it brings you to this menu. And if we advance down to set date and press the middle button, we can set the date. Today is February 11th, and it is 2018. Oh, went a bit too far there. And some of the other menu items. This one lets you turn daylight savings time, uh, da sorry, daylight saving time compensation on off. Um, this lets you change the way that the time is displayed. You can show it with seconds, uh, without seconds, with a weird colon thing, or hours and minutes compressed at the center. I like it with seconds, so we'll put it back there. Uh, lets you turn off the um, date display every other minute. Um, pressing the middle button will change it from yes to no. Uh, battery status indicator. There's a coin cell uh, battery in there, and it looks like it's okay. Firmware version 1.0. And if we cycle back to the beginning, there's the ZZZ snoring sleep mode, which if you turn on, means that the uh, display is normally off, and to display the time you have to um, press a button. So if we wait a couple more seconds, we should see uh, the display blank. I believe it's uh, 10 seconds. Yep, there we go. And then pressing another button lights it back up. You can hold down the menu button and take it uh, out of sleep mode. And uh, last thing, oh yes, the alarm. If you press the second button, it lets you set the alarm, and let's set it for uh, 9, oh, that's 10, went too far. Don't know how to use my own device. Uh, let's set it for 9.57, and, <laughs> well, uh, Let's uh, check back in a couple more seconds. All right, just a couple more seconds to go. You'll see the decimal point in the lower right is on, showing the alarm's active. And there it goes. Now to turn off the alarm, you just hold any button, and that shuts it off. So that's pretty much the feature set of the clock. Let's turn the light back on, and then I'll open it up and show you uh, what the insides look like. Okay, so I've taken the electronics out of the case, and you can see the six pneumatron tubes. Um, each of them is mounted to this front PCB uh, using these little brass pin sockets. And as you can also see, this is sort of a two board stack with um, these uh, 0.1 inch headers in between. And on the back, we have the uh, backup battery over here. Uh, then we have the beeper, and over here is the uh, power supply for the pneumatrons. That's an adjustable low dropout regulator. Uh, it's currently set to about 3.7 volts. And we've got our USB power connection and our three buttons over here. Now all the goodies are inside, so I will power this off and take the two boards apart. Okay, so we've taken apart the two boards. Uh, this front board has no electronics on it, just the pin sockets and then some male header pins. Um, all the electronics are on the backboard here. On the left, there's the 3.3-volt uh, low dropout regulator for the logic. We have the display drivers, which are these four um, 
STP16 CPO5 uh, shift registers, constant current, uh, well, they're normally LED drivers, but they work just fine with uh, pneumatrons. Um, and then over here, ignoring the bodge wires, we have the real-time clock, which is a PCF2129 AT uh, with a built-in temperature compensated uh, crystal oscillator with an accuracy of, they say, plus minus three parts per million, which sounds pretty good. Um, and down here is the microcontroller, which is a little tiny uh, ARM Cortex M0 Plus. It's an LPC811. Um, and really, that's pretty much it. There's no multiplexing because pneumatrons are pretty hard to, to multiplex because... Um, <laughs> can you hear the cat? The cat wants to get in. Who is this? Oh, hello, sandwiches. Anyway, <laughs> um, everything is direct driven. So there are 64 outputs here connected to the 60 segments of the pneumatrons. Four of those are unused. Um, both these segments, uh, dri these segment drivers and the real-time clock are just uh, connected to the microcontroller via SPI. Um, that's pretty much it. So uh, thanks for watching.